Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. What is shared load balancer? So shared load balancer, it will be, you know, the component provided by MuleSoft. You, we don't have any control over it and it will be sitting outside of my customer VPC. It won't come as part of my customer VPC. When I'm creating VPC, right? The shared load balancer will be sitting outside. When you'll be creating dedicated load balancer, that will be sitting inside my VPC. So the first difference, okay? This guy will be outside of your VPC. Because this is shared, it can't be part of any client. Since it is shared, right? Everybody wants to access it, it has to be outside of the VPC. Correct? Okay? Now, this guy will be having URLs. And those URLs looks like cloud.io always. This is how the URL of shared load balancer always looks like. Now second, so this is URL pattern always looks like this. So only things will be changed region and app name. So if you remember what app name I have given in my, my, my deployment, if you remember I gave hello hyphen world hyphen ap right and then if you remember what is the region we have used we have used us hyphen e2 that is east2 and rest of the thing will be as it is cloud hub dot io this will be your host name okay and what is the you uh, uh, resource path we have given hello and it will be HTTP slash if I trigger this URL my app should be accessible okay and now this is the URL of your shared load balancer is that clear the URL part is clear yeah okay now if you remember what is the default port for HTTP can you tell me please what is the default port for HTTPS? Can you tell me please? For for Ethernet. For for HTTP? It's 80. 80. And for HTTPS is a 443. Now on shared load balancer, this this port numbers will be forwarded. Okay. So now if you remember on which port my app is running, if you remember when we created, if you look at this listener configuration on which port it's running it's running on 8081 now when i'm triggering this url this url this actually adds 80 over here right now when i'm triggering this url how come my app which is running on 8081 is getting access by this url so the magic happens behind the scene in shared load balancer so what shared load balancer does, shared load balancer does is port mapping. Port, we call it port forwarding. So this port forwarding is fixed. We cannot change this. This will get mapped to 8081 and 443 will get mapped to 8082. This is fixed on shared load balancer. Am I clear? Second point. Yeah. Okay. So can you tell me if the app is running on 9000, can I access that app from shared load balancer? So you have to uh, specify 9000 in your app. Yeah, I have, I, let's say I have, I have uh, you know, mentioned here 9000. Now I deployed this app on my cloud app. Can I access that app from my... <coughs> my shared load balancer from SLP. Uh, no. Sorry? No, right? No, I said I don't know. Since this port, port forwarding is constant, we cannot change this. Only apps are accessible from shared load balancer, the apps which are running on either 8081 or 8082. Maybe Simple with the answer to this is balancer you can. Sorry, with the dedicated load balancer. Maybe with the dedicated load balancer can you? 
I, I come to that point. Answer is no. Okay. okay. I'll come to that point also. Okay. So let's discuss this shared road answer first and we'll see what are limitations are there. Okay. Now first point, the URL will be like this. So most of the time your client won't be happy with this URL. They don't want to give this cloudup.io, you know, a kind of URL to their client. They need vanity URLs. Vanity URL is something like, let's say, uh, uh, you know, my company, right? So IGM guru, right? Dot com slash hello world, right? Slash hello. So this kind of URLs they generally want or people want. So API dot if you remember, right? API dot. So this is production URL. If it is a non-production URL, you will add something called dev dot over here, right? So this kind of URL your client will be looking for. Now this is not possible with the shared load balance. Vanity URLs are not possible with the shared load balance. Am I clear with the third point? Okay, so that's one of the reasons why you would get a the uh, distributed, I mean dedicated, dedicated load balancer. <coughs> okay, now if I want to upload my certificates on shared load balancer, not possible. Certificates, my own certificates, not possible. So whatever, wherever I am writing X, okay, not possible. I cannot upload my certificate since it is a complete black box. I'll write here black box. For <coughs> clients, users, you cannot do anything. Okay. Now, this is this third point. Fourth point is clear. This is clear. This is clear. Now, last thing. Okay. I'll try to give you last thing, which is since this is shared, the rate limiting is enabled on this. Rate limiting is what? Okay, so rate limiting is something you are controlling number of requests served by shared load balancer. For example, you are saying 100 API calls per second. Now what happens? More than 100 API requests comes, then this shared load balancer will simply reject them. Even your app is running, Hello, uh, Hello World app is still up and running healthy. There will be a scenario or maybe a scenario you won't be able to access it. It will throw you error saying that too many requests or service not available. This is the biggest disadvantage of this. No client will allow this right they won't like this feature so that's the reason you'll go with dedicated load balancer am i clear with all these points yeah okay let's look at dedicated load balancer what we'll get with a dedicated load balance now when i'm saying dedicated load balancer this is uh, you are going to create that means you have permission for all these things now you can buy your DNS name, own DNS, something like this, dev.apiigemguru.com. Once you buy a DNS, you can upload your certificate, you'll get SSL certificate. Upload SSL certificates, you get this option. Now, one more thing here, it is fixed. Okay, so that is port forwarding again here. Port forwarding, we cannot change this. So what is the port forwarding here? Again, 80, which is for HTTP, that will get mapped to 8091. And 443 will get mapped to 8092. This is fixed, we cannot change on DLP. Okay, now, there won't be any rate limiting since it is since it belongs to you only. 
you can upload your certificates you can have your own vanity urls we call it vanity urls vanity urls like api dot igm guru dot com like this okay now you can buy uh, something like uh, you know star dot wildcard certificate you can have wildcard certificate for non production and for production you can have api igm guru two two, two certificates you can you can buy it from the from your dns provider okay am i clear so far here the only thing common between slb and dlb is common between slb and dlb okay is load balancing algorithm okay which is anybody is aware of load balancing algorithm which algorithms is getting generally used by load balancers like <laughs> round robin only round robin okay that is the only fixed thing common between slb and dlb am i clear so far any questions over here why we need dlb okay now on slb i cannot do any white listing don't allow white listing of ips hope you uh, guys are cre clearly understand what is white listing of ip means yeah right? so anyone call your api that is allowed here ip white listing is allowed over here on dlb okay so now what i can do let's say i want to create two dedicated load balancers i want to allow public internet access to one dedicated load balancer so i'll whitelist 0.0.0.0 slash zero this is public internet access public access now what i'll do by default all the dedicated load balancers will have this whitelisting rule so on my external dedicated load balancer all the all dedicated load balancers are same but i'll i'll give adjective to, adjective to that particular dedicated load balancer by doing this by doing this i'll say that i'll whitelist 0.0.0.0 slash 4 zero public access now for my internal internal dlb what i'll do can anyone guess i'll give cider block of my vpc that means only if somebody is accessing from my vpc this dlb will be accessible this is called internal access am i clear we i'm going very little slow because there are these are very technical thing it takes little time to understand okay that is why i am putting all these points over here am so i clear if, so far any questions if, yeah if i want to uh, <coughs> uh, whitelist external also let's say i don't want to open it for the entire world i just want to um, uh, white only certain ips uh, for external people to call me uh, can, can you do that correct yes absolutely with this you can remove this because this is a public access because this includes everything right you can go ahead for example i so i say uh, this how is possible with so if you want something like you want to do uh, you know give access to amazon.com only right so let's say amazon world is belongs to this 10.1.0.0/19 this is the amazon world let's say so from amazon from anywhere if the request comes then only my my dlb will allow amazon access okay exactly is that answer to your question yes okay thanks for watching the video 
for full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.